Retinoblastoma, abbreviated RB, is a pediatric cancer of the eye. Retino refers to the retina, the light-sensing layer of cells that lines the back of the eye. A blast is an immature cell that is not fully differentiated, and oma is just another way to say tumor. Altogether, retinoblastoma is a tumor that derives from immature progenitor cells of the retina. Retinoblastomas tend to be found in toddlers, infants, and even fetuses since the retina is still maturing at these ages. Since young children can't voice nor necessarily even recognize their symptoms, the signs of retinoblastoma are almost always recognized first by a parent or a pediatrician. The most notable sign is leukocoria, which means white pupil and is caused by the tumor reflecting light. This differs from the normal red reflex where healthy retinas reflect red color in photos taken with flash or when a doctor or nurse looks through a handheld ophthalmoscope at the child's eye. Another sign is strabismus, where the eyes are misaligned and appear to be looking in different directions. This can happen for a number of reasons, including a tumor blocking vision in one eye, which causes the eye to drift rather than staying paired with the other eye to form an image. Retinoblastomas can also cause eye pain, redness, bulging or bleeding inside the eye. Vision loss can be as severe as blindness in that eye. If the cancer invades structures beyond the eye or metastasizes to distant organs like the brain, spine, liver, bone marrow, or lymph nodes, a broader variety of signs and symptoms is possible, such as weight loss, vomiting, headache, low blood counts, or lumps under the skin. So how does a retinal precursor cell become cancerous? This process starts if both of the cell's copies of a gene called RB1 are misspelled, lost, or turned off by methylation of their promoter. Located on chromosome 13, RB1 is a tumor suppressor gene, meaning its protein product prevents excessive cell divisions by limiting inappropriate cell cycle progression. Specifically, the retinoblastoma protein, PRB, negatively regulates the cell cycle by binding to and inhibiting the E2F family of transcription factors. When bound to E2F, PRB represses the transcription of genes required to progress from the G1 or growth 1 phase to the S or DNA synthesis phase of the cell cycle. But when neither copy of the RB1 gene works properly, there is no functioning PRB protein, and the cell loses an important mechanism for arresting cell division. E2F goes unregulated, transcribing genes that promote a transition to S phase regardless of potential DNA damage, and cells inappropriately divide. Ultimately, this results in uncontrolled, rapid, abnormal growth of cells that constitutes a tumor. When the tumors are malignant, it's called cancer. There are two distinct sets of children who get retinoblastoma, hereditary and sporadic. Hereditary retinoblastoma accounts for approximately half of cases. These patients have a germline RB1 mutation, meaning the mutation is in all of their cells, including all of their retinal cells. A germline RB1 mutation can be inherited from a parent who might themselves have had retinoblastoma, but more commonly it arises anew or de novo in the child. This mutation is called the first hit. A second hit is a mutation or other alteration that renders the remaining good copy of RB1 non-functional. A retinal cell with a second hit can thus start the path towards becoming a retinoblastoma. Second hits occur so frequently that the odds of getting one or more retinoblastoma tumors are quite high in hereditary cases. Retinoblastomas tend to happen very early in life, and many patients get tumors in both eyes called bilateral disease. A person with hereditary retinoblastoma has a 50% chance of passing on the RB1 mutation to each child. Thus, inheritance is autosomal dominant. Importantly, RB1 acts as suppressed tumors in some non-eye tissues. 
Since hereditary retinoblastoma patients have an RB1 mutation in all of their cells, that means they are at risk for developing other cancers like osteosarcoma, a bone cancer, pineoblastoma, a tumor of the pineal gland, soft tissue tumors called sarcomas, and melanoma. If the initial RB1 mutation is actually a large deletion on chromosome 13, it's called chromosome 13Q deletion syndrome and can come with additional features like developmental delay. The other half of retinoblastoma cases are sporadic. These patients were born with two normal copies of the RB1 gene and do not have a family history of retinoblastoma. For one of their retinal precursor cells to start the path towards becoming a retinoblastoma requires two random mutations, one in each copy of the RB1 in the same cell. This is really infrequent occurrence, which is why retinoblastoma is rare in the general population and why most patients with sporadic retinoblastoma only have one tumor in one eye and at a later age than heritable cases. Catching retinoblastoma early is so important that the American Academy of Pediatrics recommends red reflex checks before newborns are sent home and at subsequent routine health visits. Either an abnormal finding on a pediatrician's exam with a handheld ophthalmoscope or parental report of leukocoria or strabismus should prompt immediate referral to an ophthalmologist for a dilated eye exam. If retinoblastoma is found, imaging tests such as ultrasound and MRI can determine whether the cancer has spread to structures around the eye. RB1 gene testing can determine whether it's hereditary retinoblastoma and should be done regardless of whether the tumors are unilateral or bilateral. Over 90% of children with intraocular retinoblastoma survive. These children have an excellent prognosis because the cancer has not yet metastasized or spread outside the eye. Treatment is highly personalized and based on factors such as the size, location, and spread of the tumor. A team of specialists with experience in treating retinoblastoma including pediatric ophthalmologists and oncologists should be consulted. Possible treatments include chemotherapy, chemicals that kill cancer cells, which is delivered systemically into a vein, directly into the artery that feeds the eye or injected around or directly into the eye. Cryotherapy, a small probe that kills cancer cells by freezing them. Thermotherapy, a laser beam that kills cancer cells using heat. Radiation, high energy beams directed at the tumor from outside the body or via radioactive material placed on the eye called brachytherapy, and finally surgery. If the eye and vision cannot be preserved or if the child's life is at risk due to an excessively large tumor, the whole eye is surgically removed called enucleation. Ocular implants are put in to maintain normal facial growth and cosmetic appearance. Eye muscles are usually surgically attached so that the implant can move slightly. An ocularist will create an ocular prosthetic shaped like a hard contact lens that fits under the eyelids and looks like the child's real eye. As a result of receiving chemotherapy and or radiation, retinoblastoma patients are at increased risk of developing second treatment-related cancers. This is especially true for hereditary patients. Retinoblastoma patients should receive regular follow-up eye exams to check for recurrent or new tumors. Genetic counseling and germline testing should be offered to all patients with retinoblastoma as this information has important implications for the patient and other family members. In summary, retinoblastoma is a rare pediatric cancer of the retina caused when both copies of the RB1 gene are not functional. The first hit may be inherited, causing disease that's earlier onset and more often bilateral or may occur sporadically. Screening for retinoblastoma is part of the routine child health care since early referral and intervention by specialists can help to preserve vision and even life.